Hey everybody, Atlas here again. Uh, it's a rainy day outside. I'm downstairs. I don't know why I'm slowly revealing to you the details of where I live, for some reason. You know that I have a cat, you know that I live in an attic, and there's a downstairs. And I'm currently there. Anyway, today I'm here with uh, here for a premium Grand Blue deck profile. Um, so, ever since the reboot, uh, I, I picked up Grand Blue because it was my first plan way back in the day, and then it, over time, kind of got power crept out by things like Angel Feather and, uh, you know, OTT was already kind of doing better than it to begin with, but I think in premium, there are a lot of tools you can use to make the deck really, like, good and fun, and, uh, yeah, let's get started. So, uh, for the starter, you have uh, Undying Departed Grenache. So he's a forerunner. He's got the hollow ability, which is uh, when it's placed on rear, you can have it become hollowed. And then at the end phase, uh, all of your hollowed rear guards are retired. Um, and then the important thing is that second skill, which is GB1. Uh, when it's uh, what's it? When it's put into the drop zone uh, from rear due to the hollow ability, you counter charge too. So the idea here is every turn after you use the skill you just get two counter blast back without really having to work for it. Um, this is also a unique card in that you don't want to call it as a forerunner because you want to have the extra soul for your first stride, which I will get to later. But this thing is incredibly good. It also means that the uh, like the guesswork of what to do with counter blast is largely taken out of the equation. You don't have to be like, all right, do I have to run all of the the resource PGs or no? It's it's free every turn because of course it is. Um, uh, for grade threes, you have four copies of King of Demonic Seas Best Kirk because of course I would get them all in SVR. Uh, if you remember from the standard profile, it's a grade three with the protect gift. Um, so on Vanguard Circle, uh, if I have ten or more cards in my drop zone during my turn, he gets uh, five k and a crit. And then uh, the other skill is once per turn, you can counter blast and soul blast and call a card from your drop zone. And then the card, or and then Bass Kirk gets plus five k for each grade of the card you called. So if you call a grade one, it's plus five k. If you call a grade three, it's plus fifteen k. Um, the important thing you want to use this for is for the Protect Gifts. Um, it's also a great Grade 3 ride because you can start building a field. Um, it's also a great card for constant pressure if by some weird, you know, if you end up not being able to stride. Or if you uh, use Megido and don't kill the opponent and then your G-Zone goes away. Uh, that is actually a thing that can happen, but it also means that usually Megido rips enough cards away from the opponent that this is a great way to just kind of take advantage of the weakened state. So, uh, yeah. Then, more important than Bass Kirk is four copies of Dragon Undead Skull Dragon, so also with the Protect Gift. On Vanna Rear, uh, he gets plus 2k for every card and drop. Um, he can't be normal called from hand, which, fine, I guess. Uh, that's not really much of an issue. And then also, at the end of the battle that he attacked, you retire it. So this is going to be your workhorse for uh, most of your, you know, most of the things that call other things, you're going to be calling this because it gets really big really fast. And uh, it's not a bad ride because you at least get a protect gift out of the deal. And it's a great stride fodder because you want it in drop zone anyway. And uh, yeah, it, it largely serves the same purpose it does in the standard build, but uh, it also is your win condition with things like Mighty Doe. So... Yeah, great card. Run four of. One copy of uh, Nightly Road Nightstorm. Um, so, grade three with a hollow ability. And then when you, uh, when you ride him, you can counter blast, soul blast, check top five cards for a card with a hollow ability. Put it in your hand and shovel. You're never going to use that. The other skill is GB1. Uh, at the end of the battle, that uh, it attacked a Vanguard. Um, if he's hollowed, you call a card from drop zone to the rear guard circle he is not on. So you can't call over him, but the important thing is that you can loop this back and forth with a uh, uh, columbard, which I'll get to in a bit. And then also, it means that uh, if you do the Megido turn, you're going to do an outrageous combo with 
Skull Dragon and this, and get like a fuck ton of attacks that are really big. So, uh, very good card to have as a one of. It's also the reason you run it at one is you have a bunch of cards that allow you to search your deck and put things in the drop zone. So, you don't really have to run a lot of copies of things for consistency's sake because you can search them anyway. Um, there are things you want to run more copies of, of course, but it's just something where, like, if you ride him, it's not good for anybody. And, uh, yeah, that's why he's at one. Um, four copies of Ruin Shade. This is the original version. This is the origin rare. Um, so on Van or Rear, when it attacks Vanguard, you can mill two cards. And then uh, she gets 50, uh, sorry, 4k for that battle. Um, and then the other skill is if you have 10 or more cards in your drop zone, she gets 4k all the time. So this allows you to uh, set up your drop zone early. It also allows you to be a beat stick that can hit force numbers just kind of for free. Um, a lot of your grade 2 lineup kind of doesn't really do that much, except for be a warm body that does things. Um, so it, it fills out the lineup in that way, but it also is better in the early and mid game. So it kind of, the usage falls off late game, but she's still important enough to run the four of. Also, I may or may not be a whore and don't want to not run four copies of the Origin Rare. You decide for yourself. Three copies of Pirate Swords and Columbard. So this is the uh, Amber clone from way back in the day. GB1 on rear, when it attacks Vanguard while boosted, you counterblast and call a card from drop zone to rear. So the idea is you can kind of shit out a board out of nothing, thanks to things like uh, you know, Gauche and, um, and the Night Rose Stride, which again, I'll get to in a bit. Uh, but it also means that the way Grand Blue works is calling over things while attacking doesn't matter because it's going right back where you want it. So this allows a Protect Clan to kind of behave like an Excel Clan, which, uh, oh yeah, this is this is right in my alley. So the idea typically is you make a column, usually get Grenache back here because it's hitting 14, who cares? Attack with a Skull Dragon on the other side, it dies. You know, use Column Bird to call night, uh, you know, night Storm. Attack with Night Storm, call a Skull Dragon over the Column Bard that has finished attacking. It's, it's just a damn good card. Um, you can run four if you want, but I found three to be optimal. Um, one copy of the old Captain Nightmist. So, uh, one place, you counterblast one, call a grade one or less from drop, and then if you have ten or more cards and drops, and when you do the skill, you can call any grade instead. Um, this is good any time of the game. It also means that uh, if your Maggie Doe burned your G-Zone away, this allows you to kind of uh, follow up where you can go, all right, um, Bass Kirk into this, this into Skull Dragon, so you can fill your board again. Um, and it allows you to just chain calls into each other. And it, like I said before, where you can search your deck for things, it you know, you don't really need more than the one. Um, one copy of Still is a Cannoneer. So uh, Hollow and then GB1, when uh, placed on R from the drop zone, you counter blast and retire an opponent's rear guard, and then if he is hollowed when you do that, you draw a card. So you're probably always going to do this. Um, you're always going to hollow him. Uh, you don't really need to not hollow him. The only reason you would before was because if you ran the Night Rose version of the build, which I don't do because I find it too slow to really be effective, where you have to kind of set up your like the Denial Griffin thing. All right, I'm going to put this back here and then I'm going to use this G guard to retire Cannoneer and then mill three and then call Cannoneer back and then kill something else. And, and then the opponent's not going to really care because by the end of G era, pretty much everything had some form of removal. So there's kind of no reason for this to be, uh, you know, ran at more than one. Uh, although having the ability to remove things yourself is always great because you can get rid of annoying things that the opponent might have in the back row or something. Or, also, if you don't really have the ability to, you know, prosecute your own battle phase that will try and kill, you can use this, like, as one of your call targets to get resources where you can plus two, or plus one because he dies. So, you kill an opponent's thing, so that replaces himself, and then you draw one, so that's plus one. So, yeah, pretty solid card. Um, one copy of King Serpent. So, um, when placed from drop, you soul charge and counter charge. Uh, very important for uh, keeping the attacks going if you happen to be low on counter blasts during your turn. 
So again, it's mostly against things like Mega Colony where they can sap your counter blast away. Um, and, you know, just kind of allows you to extend your counter blast usage during your turn. So, pretty solid. Um, four copies of Romario. So, a similar role to uh, Skull Dryden, um, where if you have 10 or more cards in your drop during your turn, he gets plus 4k. So, he's 12k, which means that you can be a 21 column behind any rear guard, which means that if you're playing against a deck that is using an older vanguard, like Mega Colony or something like that, that's hitting numbers for free. Uh, but the important skill is when you ride on top of them, you can counterblast one, put a card into your soul from hand, mill three, and then pick a card from drop and put it in your hand. So this is the exact same role it had uh, in the standard version. Um, it's also a 10k shield that, you know, it kind of just, there's no downside to this. You want the extra soul for you know, the Gauche turn, or any anything else you happen to be working with, and it's just, it's a great card, so... Has, uh, three copies of Dancing Cutlass, the new one. So, uh, from drop, you bind another copy of Cutlass, and uh, mill a card, and then call this from drop and counter charge. So again, if you need more counter blast during your turn, and not just at the end of your turn, you can use this in, in, uh, in an emergency. But also, uh, I have considered, and you're welcome to do this yourself, uh, to run one copy of the old Dancing Cutlass, which was uh, a 5k grade 1, where uh, if something, or when it's placed on rear, you sold last 2 and draw a card. Because the way this card is worded is, bind one other Dancing Cutlass from your drop zone and, you know, do the thing, call it to rear counter charge. So, if this happens to be, you know, if this happens to be one of the old cutlass, this cutlass can bind the old one for part of the cost. So there's more flexibility there. Um, part of the reason I didn't end up going with it in the end is A, you kind of nuke your soul on the gauche turn and don't really have a good way of filling it up later, and B, it was such a pain in the ass to hunt down that after I proxied it, I was like, it's just not worth the trouble. So um, at least that, that's for me. If you run more cards that allow you to get soul or you abuse your King Serpent a bit more, yeah, go for it. Um, two copies of Headstart Zombie, and this is probably one of the uh, awards for the most useful cards in the deck. Uh, 7k, grade 1. With the hollow ability and then GB1 when placed on rear, if it's hollow, you search your deck for a card, put it in the drop zone, shuffle, and if he's not hollow, you mill a card. Um, so, you will, you will always be hollowing this. I'm not sure why you wouldn't. Uh, but the important thing is this allows you to toolbox your drop zone pretty quick. Uh, if you call it with Gash and then call over it with Columbard and then call it back with something else and then you search for something, it, it's it's just so freaking good. I didn't really need more than two, though, because you see them enough through things like um, itself or Chapter the Ghosty or just the how fast you go through your deck anyway. So, yeah. Um, three copies of Tommy the Ghosty Brothers. Uh, still a deck that strides a lot, so you want it more. Um, also in the event that you go into a certain G-Guard, this is a thing you can call from it. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, pretty good card. You run nine grade threes and three of the, you know, twelve things, or eleven things to discard. For stride is worth it to me. Um, one copy of Freddy the Ghosty. So, you may be wondering why I'm not running the, um, the 7k PG that they give every deck that's a great one, or why I'm not just running four draw PGs. One, uh, you want the ability to get around certain guard restricts. Some things only block grade zeros, some block uh, grade one or higher. So running draw PGs and this I think is worth it. Um, also the grade one lineup is kind of, you know, not important enough, for lack of a better term, to not run four draw PGs. And also, you would deck yourself out, in my opinion. But another good thing about this is there's a G guard that allows you to get around certain types of guard restrict, unless your name is Ichikashima. But uh, yeah, so it's just a PG. Also, if you happen to be going against DZ, where they. Um, you don't want to give them counterblast, or you know, still want the 
um, the ability to drive check without possibly giving them damage. Riding these turn one is pretty great because then they're 7k base and you can be like, all right, attack for six. And then they're like, take it because I want a damage check and trigger. And then you're like, nah, mate. Oh, I got a draw trigger. I'm going to put it somewhere else and then not attack with it. So suck on that. Like, it, it's it's uh, very flexible in its usage despite how it looks. Um, also, it's a ghosty that you can call off of, uh, uh, you know, the G guard I mentioned before. One chappy the ghosty. Um, so when you guard with it, you search your deck for a card and put it in drop zone. So much like Head Start Zombie, it allows you to toolbox your deck into where you want it. Um, it, it is also able to be reused with uh, the G guard with Negrinora coming up. Let's see. Um, for triggers, we have four copies of Rick the Ghosty. Um, I didn't get Dewey the Ghosty because, like I said before, you are able to control your resources enough where you don't need the counter charge or soul charge for whatever reason. Also, I would like to minimize the binding to keep Skull Dragon's powers up. And then lastly, plus 10k power on, you know, driver damage check is still good, so... Rick the Ghosty. All right, super important, four copies of Rough Seas Banshee. So uh, you can put her in Soul from Rear and draw a card. Uh, here's the cool thing with how uh, Grand Blue works. When you Soul Blast it for a cost or something, and then you can call it back, and then you can do the skill again. This is really freak. It's like, it's an amazing draw engine that can be reused, and you have to run four of this. I'm not even kidding. So yeah, what I just said about Rick the Ghosty being like, oh, 10k. Power is worth, yeah, having a little less shield and a little less power given, but being a spammable draw engine is, is so freaking worth it. Um, then, six of the new crit, or sorry, five. Five of the new crit, because it's still worth it to have 15k shield and plus 10k power, and be a crit. Um, now that Mick the Ghosty and Family is off the ban list, there is kind of no reason to, you know, do it, because everything gives 10k power anyway, and vanguards and like base power is just bigger. So being plus 10k shield doesn't have the oomph that it used to. Um, so that's why I ended up not using it. Plus you're calling over things all the time. There's nothing really to stand. Crits are better. All right, three copies of Gustian, uh, the new Gustian. So um, I considered, being that this is a protect de deck, I considered cutting down the number of PGs in total in the main deck because Protect Gifts are able to, you know, I guess bridge the gap, but I found in testing that it didn't really turn out to be the case because in Premium the attacks are so much bigger and more frequent that uh, PGs are still needed at the maximum amount no matter what you're playing. And this mostly coming from playing against my friend Vince's uh, Premium Dimension Police with his 128k re-standing X-Gallop with the floor, look, just run the maximum amount of Sentinels if you can. If you want to run less draws and more crits and then find find a way to fit in a second uh, regular PG, go for it. But uh, I, I just found this to be the best after testing. Um, now on to the G deck. This is what my Protect markers look like because of course they do. Now, um, for the G zone you have two copies of uh, Tempest Calling Pirate King Gauche. So, um, when you stride him, you Counter Blast Soul Blast and flip a copy of him face up. And then you put any number of cards from your soul into your drop zone, which if you rode over Romario or used a, uh, you know, Rough Seas Banshee, it will be at least three or more. Um, then you pick the same number of cards that, from your drop zone that you soul blasted out, not as part of the cost, as part of the effect. Um, and then call them to rear and they all get plus 1k for every face-up card in G zone. The plus 1k doesn't really matter. The important thing is that you can empty out your soul to toolbox your drop zone to make a board for basically nothing. This is literally always your first stride, and it's very, very good, and it's been like that since it came out. When did this come out? Like, junior year of college for me, and I, or senior year? When did... GBTO8? Mm, senior year of college, and I'm, like, a grown man now in quotes. And, uh, yeah, so this thing's really freaking good. And, uh, you don't really need more than two, though, because, uh, this thing serves literally the same purpose after first stride. Uh, Pirate King of Rosate Twilight, Night Rose. So, 
Um, once per turn, you can counterblast, choose a copy of her, turn it face up, and then call the number of card, call X number of cards in your drop zone equal to the number of face up cards in G zone plus one. So if after you flip you have two, you can call up to three. If you have one, you call two, three, you call four, etc. Um, then uh, they're all called as hollowed, whether they have the skill or not. And then if you call three or more cards with the ability, she gets a crit. So this is just a free board for like no reason. Um, and then, yeah, they all die at the end, but they probably were all going to anyway, so that's fine. And then the other skill is at the start of your battle phase, you pick, uh, what is it again? You choose a unit for each Night Rose in your drop zone, and it, uh, they get 5k, so there are no cards in the deck, in the main deck, that have Night Rose in the name, so that still will literally never happen. But if you find a way, if you want to do the Night Rose version, and you like you're on Starlight Night Rose and stuff, then yeah, you can do that second still for free. So um, it's still a really freaking good card, and a way to just kind of you know spin your wheels while you wait for either the Medido or the boat or however else you want to kill. Because there's like six different ways you can kill. Sometimes this is how you kill. Um, two copies of Diabolist of Corpse Negrosonger, which I just found out is getting a reprint, even though I think the Night Rose Stride should have been the reprint one. Anyway, uh, on Van, uh, Counterblast 1, turn a copy of it face up. I've got to read this again, because I can't read from that far. Uh, end of the battle that it attacks, uh, you can pay the cost. If you do, look at four cards from the top of the deck, put it one in the drop zone. Choose a card from your drop zone, call it to R, and gets plus 5k for each face-up card in G-Zone. So, much like, uh, you know, maybe though this allows you to continue prosecuting attacks against the opponent past where you normally would. Um, nine times out of ten, you will be getting uh, what's his face, um, Skull Dragon. But it, it's it, you don't really end up going into it often, but there are situations where you will, and it's kind of worth it. Um, I wish that Violence Flinger um, would have been an auto skill on attack instead of an axe skill because that would have made this so much better. So Flanger was, uh, you Soul Blast a grade three, um, and then discard any number of cards from your hand, and he gets 5k, and the opponent can't guard with the same grades as the things you discarded. It would have been really cool is if you call, if you could call Flanger off of this, and then on attack, you know, like let's say he gets 20k or something, so he's already 32, and then he becomes 37 and they can't guard, that would have been a great, another great way to kill, but unfortunately Flanger is act, so this, is, this usefulness kind of goes down. That doesn't mean it's useless, though. Um, Alright, one copy of Xeroth Dragon of Distant Sea Megiddo. Um, so, Ultimate Stride, which is if you have three or more cards in G-Zone, you discard a copy of your Vanguard. Um, side note, if you're playing against a Dragon Empire clan and they make you Ride a grade two from your hand, or sorry, yeah, ride a grade two from your hand. If you have another copy of that grade two in hand, you can still ultimate stride if you have the three face of cards in G zone. D your vanguard doesn't have to be grade three or greater. That's a thing you can do. Whatever. Anyway, the other skill is uh, when you when he's placed on van, you can counterblast two, call up to five cards from hand or drop zone. They all get plus five k, and then red text at the end of the battle that they attacked. Uh, you pick a. Uh, you, rear guard and then swap positions. So, what you want to, like, the best way to do this is, if it's this late in the game, you want to be doing this. Um, so, alright. So you have four Skull Dragons that are probably very giant, like, in the 40s or 50s, and then this at 16k. They all have the ability to swap positions after they attack before they die because of, you know, you, you pick the order where effects resolve. So you go like, all right, 42, then switch places. Then this dies because of his effect. Now there's another card and drops. This gets everybody, all three of these get an extra 2k. 44, switch places. It dies. 46, switch places. It dies. 48, it dies. 16, although if they took a trigger on damage, you might want to attack with Vanguard first and do triggers here. 16, call this back. Now, because uh, the 5k isn't in effect anymore when you recall this, it's going to, the previous metric of 48 becomes 43, but that's still fucking huge. Then, 37, triple drive, this, and they should have been dead like three attacks ago, but that's still a thing you can do, and you can set that up thanks to things like 
Head Start Zombie and Chappie the Ghosty and uh, Romario and all that other good stuff. So this is most times your way to finish, but it's still really good. And because of how Bass Perk works, you can still I, like do things even after the uh, if the opponent manages to live that, which they usually won't, but it's still a thing. So yeah, very good card. Then there's one copy of the boat. I don't care what his real name is to me. He's the boat. So uh, GB8 when placed on Van, you choose up to five cards from your drop zone, call them all to separate rear, and they get plus 10k for the turn, and they all die at the end. So this is literally free. It's one of the better GB8s, and uh, there's no reason not to run it, because sometimes you just get a bunch of heals at the beginning of the game and go into this willy-nilly, so cool. Um, then, you run six uh, uh, G-guards because, because they're all kind of good, and there's no, like, there aren't really any better strides to do, like, Negrosonor is honestly kind of filler. Outside of Gash, the Night Rose strides, and the boat, and... Maggie Doe, most of it is just, like... Actually, even the boat is kind of filler. Outside of Gash, Night Rose, and the boat, it, like, you can kind of put whatever you want, honestly. Uh, but, for G-Guards, you have uh, Diabolist of uh, Solicit... Is that Solicitation? It is Solicitation. Negrinora. So, uh, she's the flippy G-Guard, so GB1, when you uh, guard with her, you Soul Blast, flip a card in G-Guard uh, uh, face up. And then you call two separate, uh, two cards of separate grades from drop to guard circle. The best things you want to call are, uh, wherever he is, like Chappie and Freddy the Ghosty, because Chappie searches deck for a card, puts it in drop, and Freddy discards a card, and you PG. Now, that's not always going to happen, but um, another good way to do it would be like, you know, Chappie and like just a 10k shield grade one, or you can do the heal you just discarded for cost and, you know, and the grade one, so it's just a big ass shield. It's very flexible in its usage, um, and that's why you run it at two, because uh, doing the skill twice is worth it. Plus it lets you get to the boat faster, that's, uh, that's your prerogative. So yeah, good G-Guard is good. Um, let's see, one copy of uh, Deep Corpse Dragon. So, it, when you guard with it, you mill two and it gets 5k shield. Uh, the reason you run this is because it's free, and um, sometimes Gize will put a put a damper on your day and not give you damage, but you still need to G-guard for stuff. Is it the exact same amount of shield as just uh, guarding with a heal trigger? Maybe, but it also adds to your G-zone count, which means you can, you know, do it, what it is you want to do. Sometimes it's the flip target for Negronora, and that's okay too. Um, one copy of Great Witch Doctor of Vanquart's Negronilly? Negrolily? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, when you G-guard with her, you choose a rear guard and retire it, and, uh, if you do that, you can call a, a ghosty, for a normal unit ghosty from drop, and she gets 10k shield. Now, you don't always have to call a ghosty to get the 10k shield, you just have to kill something and do the counter blast. Um, if you happen to have nuked your soul, uh, Gauche the turn before, but you still need a bigger shield, this is what you will often use that for, but sometimes it's also the flip target for Negronora. Uh, so, yeah, flexible. Um, one copy, Diabolist of Tombs, Negronode. So, when you guard with her, you Soul Blast, and she gets 5k, if you have 5 or more cards in drop, she gets 5k extra shield. 10 or more, uh, 10k shield, 15 or more, 15k shield. So, this scales with the, uh, how big your drop zone is, Sometimes you just need a big-ass shield, and this can provide that, too. So, hooray. Sometimes it's the flip target for Negrinora. That's a running gag. All right, last thing. Uh, Air Element Ractomi, so the drop-and-draw uh, G-Guard. Sometimes it's the flip target. Sometimes you just need to make your hand a little better or toolbox your drop zone. So that's what you use it for. All right, that was the deck. Uh, if you like it, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll have some games with this up in, uh, in the coming weeks. But, uh, yeah, love you all. See you next time.